Okay, welcome back. I'm Alex Wood, and this is Ed Mackey, from, uh, both from Analytical Graphics. And we're here to talk about, GL continue our video series on GLTF authoring from end to end. So starting from model geometry creation through material generation and with an end, pro end goal of having a GLTF model that we can use everywhere. So in the last video we authored, uh, we downloaded a texture set from CG CC Zero CC Textures. Zero. Yes. Uh, dot com and it was a nice little solar cell texture set that had metallic roughness, base color textures, and we applied that to our solar cells. They look much better now. Uh, we threw out the placeholder uh, material that we had from an earlier episode. Mm -hmm. And um, Ed, what are we going to do today? Well, today we're going to create a UV atlas. So we have we, we in in the last video we did this uh, downloading the image and then creating the UVs to match the image and this time we're going to do it the other way around we're going to create a UV atlas with no image and then we're going to start baking into that atlas if you already know how to create a UV atlas you can skip this video on to the next video where we'll talk about using that UV atlas that we've built um, to bake a, a procedural texture map of some brushed aluminum with uh, with fractal 3D noise in it that's exciting. It, Yes, yes. But UV maps are also exciting. No, not really. UV maps, honestly, are a little bit of a chore, but they're an important thing to get right. Uh, this is a leftover uh, texture from a previous video. I'm going to hit this X button to clear it out. So you just jumped over to the UV editing? Uh, yes. I am in, I'm in. i still in Blender 2.81a, and I've uh, loaded the project from the previous video, and I've jumped over to the UV editing tab. And the tab always comes up in edit mode. I'm going to hit I'm going to hit tab uh, to switch to object mode. I need to uh, make some changes here to the number of objects I have selected. First of all, I, I don't want to affect what we did in the previous video with these solar panels. So I'm actually I'm going to hold shift and click the eyeball on the CubeSat and make the whole thing go away. That not just the the parent object, but all the child objects. And now I'm just going to regular click the eyeball, and we see coming back. We see just the CubeSat body with just some placeholder uh, materials on it. And I'm also going to need flap one. There are four flaps on this CubeSat. And in, if, you recall, if you recall from previous videos, they are all instances of the first one. So we really only need to apply uh, texturing to one of the four flaps, and it will get automatically copied around to the rest. Uh, so these two objects, I'm going to uh, multi-select them and hit, hit tab to edit them, hit A to select all. We are going to create a, a UV atlas for this. Now you'll notice there's some UV coordinates that are already here. They, they're just sort of naturally here as part of the construction process of the model. Uh, Blender may have tried to automatically assign some here and there or along the way. I'm going to get rid of them all. Yeah, I see a lot of geometry stacked on top of each other there. Yes, yes. And when you're baking a material, you cannot have the sort of UVs stacked on top of each other like this. And that's one of the advantages actually with going the other way, with starting with the image. Then you can have all the overlap you want. You can have UVs sticking off the edge, wrapping around. Uh, but when we're baking, we're constrained to bake within the confines of the image uh, with no overlap. So let's hit the U key. I'm going to start by doing the most naive thing possible, ask Blender to be smart for me. Um, we'll see how well that works. I'm going to tell it, though, to use an island margin of 0.02. This, the, the UV atlas is broken up into these islands, and I like to give them a little gap. And I also like to tell it to not stretch these things. I would, sometimes I stretch them manually, uh, but I don't want Blender to pre-stretch them. So I hit OK on that. Blender takes its uh, best swing. It looks pretty smart to me. How can it, we, I mean, can we do better? I think we can do a little better than this. One of the not so smart things is there's a lot of empty space up here at the top, uh, which I don't like. Those are all wasted texture pixels that will be filling up your GPU memory but not contributing to your model on the screen. Uh, and the other thing I don't like about what it did is that um, I've actually got two different materials on here. I've got a a metal frame material, and I have a yellow circuit board material. And it's sort of jumbled them together. I would like to separate those. So I'm going to hit Alt-A to deselect. I'm going to select these materials one at a time, starting with the circuit board. And I'm going to separately unwrap my uh, individual materials. 
And this is a technique I've been using on a couple of models I built, where I unwrap one material, I hit select all, and I just shove it off to the side. And we select the second material. And you see that before I unwrap the second material, you see from our original unwrapping, uh, we have some of the material over here and some over there, and then we have a gap where there was some other material in between. That's what I don't like about the automated unwrapping. So I'm unwrapping one material at a time. This has advantages and, and disadvantages. One of the disadvantages is you, you're not guaranteed the same scale. You know, each material ends up filling up the whole atlas, and then it's up to you to sort of get the scaling mostly correct. Uh, so to do this next part, I'm going to hit this little button here is called UV Island Selection Mode, and that lets me hit a single vertex and just move an entire UV island out of the way. I want to take this big column in the middle and shove it to the left, and there's some little blocks here. The, I think these are the tops and bottoms of the feet of the CubeSat. I'm going to hit Control L to grab that last foot and slide it out of the way. And I want to get this all sort of pushed over to the side. Now you'll notice the unwrapping got it very, very close to the top and bottom. So I don't want to just sloppily move it. I want to constrain it on the x-axis like that and slide it over. And let's actually zoom in and see how well I did. I'm going to slide it even a little further. So we, we pretty effectively have this sort of left third of the image filled in. And then uh, these little guys... I think I can find a spot for them just by rotating them. And it, be careful, I've loaded a project from a previous video here. And when I hit rotate, they all go crazy. Um, so uh, we, we had been on the solar cells, we had been using individual origins. I'm going back to the default behavior of bounding box. And now I can rotate the whole thing, type the number 90, hit enter. Slide that in there. And this is part of the beauty of creating the UV atlas before you create the image. It doesn't really matter where I place this. It could be over here, over there. When you do the baking process, it's, it's going to take the texture that you've assigned and try and bake it to that spot in, in the resulting image map. I'm going to take these last two things and zoom in and sort of make them a little neater and tighter. make as much room in case later on I decide to come back here and add more geometry because there's not a whole lot of geometry. Uh, and now I can hit select all and find my missing circuit boards. I'm going to ro rotate them 90. And they're too big to fit and we just scale them down. I don't want to scale them too much, but I want them to fit. Uh, so I'm going to get them to fit just like that. And, and at this point, I realize I've got extra space on the sides. I could, if I wanted to, uh, scale them a little bit this way. This gives them a few extra pixels of the texture map, but at the expense of the pixels won't be perfectly square. They'll be slightly rectangular, which may not be a bad thing for this, this particular piece I'm doing. So, so what we have right now, then, is uh, we have two separate materials that are providing UV coordinates in a single texture space. Yes, and the advantage of that is at some future point, we may end up deciding to merge these two materials into one. And the question of whether and how to merge materials is an interesting question. So let's talk for a minute about what is a material. Uh, an artist thinks a material is, is wood or metal or mud or what have you. Um, and the graphics engine thinks it's something very different. The graphics engine thinks a material is uh, the shader program, which in this case is a PBR shader and a stack of texture maps. And so we have these two material slots, and each polygon either belongs to one material or the other. And that's not always good enough. For a complex object, you might want something made of metal that has a bunch of mud splattered onto it. So you have individual pixels that are covered by mud and other pixels that are metallic. So... You may want to use a single material for both the mud and the metal as different materials, though they may seem to you. You want a single material slot, a, a single shader stack, a single texture stack controlling that. Uh, and that's one of the things that this workflow allows that, that maybe downloading uh, pre-baked images doesn't allow so much, except in the case of our solar panels, we had sort of dirt and smudges baked into them from the, from the outset, but we, we didn't get to blend them per pixel into any of our materials. 
going that route. Whereas, yeah, well, and so to to further that point there, right? We have the model will only have one texture for metal roughness for these two pieces of geometry. So they're sharing that one. I mean, that's that's only one texture to load. It's only one texture to bind when you're rendering the uh, the actual geometry in a rendering engine. So uh, the more we can combine these into mm -hmm. um, unified textures, and then as you suggested, you know, we could even take a more aggressive step and merge the materials into a single material. We won't do that right now, um, mm -hmm. but just the fact of putting these into a single texture has already given us a little bit of a... It's giving us some headroom to do that in the future. Absolutely. And that may even sa end up saving our graphics engine some some draw calls and texture binds and other mm -hmm. technical stuff like that. So, so that is our quickie UV atlas. And in the next video, we are going to uh, apply a three-dimensional noise texture map and try and get some brushed aluminum uh, on into our UV atlas and see how that works. Excellent.